I think he works here. He didn't pay with an employee card, but he acted like it, okay. She said. Send out a search party if I am not back in an hour, go get him. Tiger. The barman said, giving her hand a squeeze. She carried her pineapple with her and drifted down the bar. Hello there. She said. Miss Church, the man said. He had a disarming, confident smile. My name is Sammy Page. She knew the name, of course. The face. Too, now that she thought about it. He offered her his hand. She didn't take it. He put it down, then wiped it on his trouser leg. Are you having a good time? A lovely time. Thank you. She sipped her drink and wished it was a little more serious and intimidating. It is hard to do frosty when you reholding a rum-filled pineapple with a paper parasol. His smile faltered. I read your article. I can't believe I missed it. I mean, you've a been here for six days and I just figured it out today. I am a pretty incompetent villain. She let a little smile slip out at that. Well, it is a big internet. But I love your stuff. I've a been reading it since. Well, back when I lived in the valley. I used to get the Merc actually delivered on paper, you are a walking fossil, Aaron T.U. He bobbed his head. So it comes down to this. I've a been very distracted with making things besides lawsuits lately, as you know. I've a been putting my energy into doing stuff, not preventing stuff. It has been refreshing. She grubbed in her pocket and came up with a little steno book and a pencil. Do you mind if I take notes? He gulped. Can this all be on background? She hefted her notebook. No, she said finally. If there is anything that needs publishing, I am going to have to publish it. I can respect the fact that you re-speaking to me with candor, but frankly. Mr. Page, you haven T earned the privilege of speaking on background. He sipped at his drink a more grown-up highball, with a lone ice cube in it, maybe a scotch and soda. Okay, right. Well, then, on the record, but candorously. I loved your article. I love your work in general. I am really glad to have you here, because I think we make great stuff and we remaking more of it than ever. Your latest post was right on the money we care about our work here. That s how we got to where we are, but you devote a lot of your resources to other projects here, Don T. U. I've a heard about you. Mr. Page. I've a interviewed Death Waits. He winced and she scribbled a note, leaving him on tenterhooks while she wrote. Something cold and angry had hold of her writing arm. I've a interviewed him and heard what he has to say about this place, what you have done. My hands Aaron T the cleanest. He said. But I am trying to atone. He swallowed. The barman was looking at them. Look, can I take you for a walk, maybe? Someplace more private. She thought about it. Let me get changed. She said. Meet you in the lobby in ten. She swapped her tennis shoes for walking sandals and put on a clean shirt and long slacks, then draped a scarf over her shoulders like a shawl. Outside, the sunset was painting the lagoon bloody. She was just about to rush back down to the lobby when she stopped and called Lester, her fingers moving of their own volition. Hey, you. He said. Still having fun in Mauschwitz, it keeps getting weirder here, let me tell you. She said. She told him about Sammy showing up, wanting to talk with her. Ooh. I am jealous. Lester said. He s my arch rival, after all, I h a d n t thought of it that way. He is kind of cute, hey, in a slimy, sharky way. Don T worry. Lester. I miss you, you know, really. Really. I think I am about done here. I am going to come home soon. There was a long pause, then a snuffling sound. She realized he was crying. He slurped. Sorry. That s great. Babe. I missed you, I I missed you too. Listen. I ve got to go meet this guy. Go, go. Call me after dinner and tell me how it goes. Meanwhile. I am going to go violate the Diab some more, channel it, that s right, right on. Sammy met her in the lobby. I thought we could go for a walk around the lake. He said. There s a trail that goes all the way around. It s pretty private. She looked at the lake. At 12 o'clock, the main gates of the Magic Kingdom, at 3, the retro A-frame contemporary hotel, at 9, the wedding cake Grand Floridian Resort. Led on. She said. He led her out onto the artificial white sand beach and around, and a moment later they were on a pathway paved with octagonal tiles, each engraved with the name of a family and a year. I really liked your article. You said that. They walked a while longer. It reminded me of why I came here. 
I worked for startups, and they were fun, but they were ephemeral. No one expected something on the web to last for half a century. Maybe the brand survives, but who knows? I mean, who remembers Yahoo, anymore? But for sure. Anything you built then would be gone in a year or two, a decade tops. But here. He waved his hands. They were coming around the bend for the contemporary now, and she could see it in all its absurd glory. It had been kept up so that it looked like it might have been erected yesterday, but the towering white A-frame structure with the monorail running through its midriff was clearly of another era. It was like a museum piece, or a bit of artillery on the field at a Civil War reenactment. I see, it s about the grandiosity, the permanence. The belief in doing something anything that will endure, you didnt need to bring me someplace private to tell me that, no. I didnt. He swallowed. It s hard because I want to tell you something that will compromise me if I say it, and I want to let you off the hook by promising to keep it confidential. Exactly, well, you re on the horns of a dilemma then, Aaron T. U. The sun was nearly set now, and stones at their feet glittered from beneath, sprinkled with twinkling lights. It made the evening, scented with tropical flowers and the clean smell of the lake, even more lovely. A cool breeze fluffed her hair. He groaned. She had to admit it, she was enjoying this. Was it any less than this man deserved? Let me try this again. I have some information that, if I pass it on to you, could save your friends down in Hollywood from terrible harm. I can only give you this information on the condition that you take great pains to keep me from being identified as the source. They de come to the magic kingdom now. Behind them. The main gates loomed, and a pufferbelly choo-choo train blew its whistle as it pulled out of the station. Happy, exhausted children ran across the plaza, heading for the ferry docks and the monorail ramps. The stones beneath her feet glittered with rainbow light, and tropical birds called to each other from the pirates of the Caribbean adventure island in the middle of the lake. Hum, she said. The families laughed and jostled each other. Hum. Okay, one time only. This one is off the record. Sammy looked around nervously. Keep walking. He said. Let us get past here and back into the private spots. But it s the crowds that put me in a generous mood. She didnt say it. She d give him this one. What harm could it do? If it was something she had to publish, she could get it from another source. They re going to sue your friends, so what else is new, no personally. They re going to the mattresses. Every trumped up charge they can think of. But the point here isnt to get the cops to raid them, it s to serve discovery on every single communication, every document, every file. Open up everything. Root through every email until they find something to hang them with, you say they aren't you they. It was too dark to see his face now, but she could tell the question made him uncomfortable. No not anymore. He swallowed and looked out at the lake. Look. I am doing something now something. Amazing. The Diab, it s breaking new ground. We re putting 3D printers into every house in America. What your friend Lester is doing, it s actually helping us. We reinventing a whole new business, no, not just a business. A world. It s what the new work was missing a 3D printer in every living room. A killer app. There were personal computers and geeks for years before the spreadsheet came along. Then there was a reason to put one in every house. Then we got the internet, the whole software industry. A new world. That s where we re-headed. It s all I want to do. I don t want to spend the rest of my life suing people. I want to do stuff. He kicked at the rushes that grew beside the trail. I want to be remembered for that. I want that to be my place in the history books not a bunch of lawsuits. Suzanne walked along beside him in silence for a time. Okay, so what do you want me to do about it? I thought that if he shut up. Look. I tried this once before. I told that Freddy bastard everything in the hopes that he de come onto my side and help me out. He screwed me. I am not saying you re Freddy, but. Suzanne stopped walking. What do you want from me? Sir. You have hardly been a friend to me and mine. It s true that you've a made something very fine, but it s also true that you helped sabotage something every bit as fine. You repainting yourself as the victim of some mysterious them. But as near as I can work out. The only difference between you and them is that you re-having a little disagreement with them. I don't like to be used as part of your corporate head games and power struggles, fine. He said. Fine. I deserve that. I deserve no better. Fine. 
Well, I tried, Suzanne refused to soften. Grown men sulking did not inspire any sympathy in her. Whatever he wanted to tell her, it wasn't worth going into his debt. He gave a shuddering sigh. Well, I've taken you away from your evening of fun. Can I make it up to you? Would you like to come with me on some of my favorite rides? This surprised her a little, but when she thought about it, she cooled dnt see why not. Sure, she said. Taking a guest around Disney World was like programming a playlist for a date or a car trip. Sammy had done it three or four times for people he was trying to win over, mostly women he was trying to screw, and he refined his technique every time. So he took her to the Carousel of Progress. It was the oldest untouched ride in the park, a replica of the one that Walt himself had built for GE at the 1964 World's Fair. There had been attempts to update it over the years, but they'd all been ripped out and the show restored to its mid-60s glory. It was a revolving theater where robots danced and sang and talked through the American century, from the last days of the coal stove up to the dawn of the space age. It had a goofy, catchy song, cornball jokes, and he relished playing guide and telling his charges about the time that the revolving theater had trapped a careless cast member in its carousel and crushed her to death. That juxtaposition of sunny, goofy American corporate optimism and the macabre realities of operating a park where a gang of half-literate minimum wage workers spent their days shoveling the world's rich children into modified threshing machines it was delicious. Suzanne's body language told him the whole story from the second she sat down, arms folded, a barely contained smirk on her lips. The lights played over the GE logo, which had acquired an even more anachronistic luster since the last time he'd been. Now that GE had been delisted from the NYSE, it was only a matter of time before they yanked the sponsorship, but for now, it made the ride seem like it was part-time machine. Transported back to the corporate Pleistocene, when giant Dynacore thundered over the plains. The theater rotated to the first batch of singing. Wise cracking robots. Her eyebrows shot up and she shook her head bemusedly. Out came the second batch, the third now they were in the fabulous forties and the Andrews sisters played while grandma and grandpa robot watched a bulging fish eye TV and sister got vibrated by an electric slimming belt. The jokes got worse, the catchy jingle their essay great big beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. Got repeated with more vigor. It's like an American robot performance of Triumph of the Will. She whispered to him, and he cracked up. They were the only two in the theater. It was never full, and he himself had taken part in spitball exercises brainstorming replacements, but institutionally. Disney Parks cool DNT bring itself to shut it down. There was always some excuse rabid fans, historical interest, competing priorities but it came down to the fact that no one wanted to bring the axe down on the robot family. The final segment now. The whole family enjoying a futuristic Christmas with a high-tech kitchen whose voice-activated stove went haywire. All the robots were on stage for the segment, and they exhorted the audience to sing and clap along. Sammy gave in and clapped, and a second later. Suzanne did. Two, laughing at the silliness of it all. When the house lights came up and the bored but unsquashed cast member spieled them out of the ride. Sammy had a bounce in his step and the song in his head. That was terrible. Suzanne said. I sent it great, God. I ll never get that song out of my head. They moved through the flashing lights of Tomorrowland. Look at that no line on Space Mountain. Sammy said. Pointing. So they rode Space Mountain twice. Then they caught the fireworks. Then Sammy took her over to Tom Sawyer Island on a maintenance boat and they sat up in the tree house and watched as the park heaved and thronged, danced and ran, laughed and chattered. Hear the rustling, yeah, what is that, rabbits or something? Giant rats. Sammy grinned in the dark. Giant, feral rats, come on, you re-joking, cross my heart. We drain the lake every now and then and they migrate to the island. No predators. Lots of dropped French fries it s ratopia here. They get as big as cats. Bold little fuckers too. No one likes to be here alone at night, what about us, we re together. The rustling grew louder and they held their breath. A bold rat like a raccoon picked its way across the path below them. Then two more. Suzanne shivered and Sammy did. Two. They were huge, feral, menacing. Want to go, hell yes. She said. She fumbled in her purse and came out with a bright little torch that shone like a beacon. 
You weren't he supposed to use bright lights on the island after hours while the rest of the park was open, but Sammy was glad of it. Back on the mainland, they rode Big Thunder Mountain and moseyed over to the new, half-rebuilt Fantasyland. The zombie maze was still open, and they got lost in it amid the groans, animatronic shamblers, and giggling kids running through the hedges. Something happened in the maze. Between entering it and leaving it, they lost their cares. Instead of talking about the park and Hackleberg, they talked about ways of getting out of the maze, talked about which zombie was coming next, about the best zombie movies they'd ever seen, about memorable Halloweens. As they neared the exit, they started to strategize about the best ride to go on next. Suzanne had done the Haunted Mansion twice when she first arrived and now, come on, it's such a cliché. Sammy said. Anyone can be a Haunted Mansion fan. It's like being a Mickey fan. It takes real character to be a Goofy fan, you re a Goofy fan. I take it, indeed. And I am also a Jungle Cruise man, more corny jokes, we've a been dying to have you talk about cornball humor. They rode both. The park was closing, and all around them, people were streaming away from the rides. No lines at all. Not even in front of the roller coasters. Not even in front of Dumbo, not even in front of the ultra-violent flyover of the world of the zombies, nay Peter Pan's flight, and a perennial favored it. You know. I Haven T just enjoyed the park like this in years. He was wearing a huge foam goofy hat that danced and bobbed on his head, trying to do little pas de deux with the other goofy hats in the vicinity. It also let out the occasional chuckle and snatch of song. Shut up. Suzanne said. Don T talk about magic. Live magic. They closed the park, letting themselves get herded off of Main Street along with the last stragglers. He looked over his shoulder as they moved through the arches under the train station. The night crew was moving through the empty Main Street, hosing down the streets. Sweeping. Scrubbing. As he watched, the work lights came on, throwing the whole thing into near-daylight illumination, making it seem less like an enchanted wonderland and more like a movie set, an artifice. A sham. It was one in the morning and he was exhausted. And Hackleberg was going to sue. Sammy, what do you want me to do, blackmail him, I don't t no sure. Why not? You could call him and say. I hear you reworking on this lawsuit, but don't you think it's hypocritical when you've a been doing all this bad stuff, I don't t blackmail people, fine. Tell your friends. Then. Tell some lawyers. That could work, Sammy. I think we re going to have to fight this suit on its merits. Not on the basis of some sneaky intel. I appreciate the risk you re-putting yourself to, we ripped off some of Lester's code for the Diab. He blurted it out. Not believing he was hearing himself say it. I didn't know it at the time. The libraries were on the net and my guys were in a hurry, and they just imported it into the build and left it there they rewrote it with the second shipment, but we put out a million units running a library Lester wrote for volumetric imaging. It was under some crazy viral open source license and we were supposed to publish all our modifications, and we never did, Suzanne threw her head back and laughed, long and hard. Sammy found himself laughing along with her. Okay, she said. Okay. That s a good one. I ll tell Lester about it. Maybe he ll want to use it. Maybe he ll want to sue. Sammy wanted to ask her if she d keep his name out of it, but he cool dnt ask. He d gone to Hackleberg with the info as soon as he d found out and they d agreed to keep it quiet. The Imagineers responsible had had a very firm talking to, and had privately admitted to a curious and aghast Sammy over beers that everyone everywhere did this all the time, that it was so normal as to be completely unremarkable. He was pretty sure that a judge wouldn't t see it that way. Suzanne surprised him by giving him a strong, warm hug. You re not the worst guy in the world. Sammy Page. She said. Thanks for showing me around your park. Kettlewell had been almost pathetic in his interest in helping Lester out. Lester got the impression that he'd been sitting around his apartment. Moping. Ever since Eva had taken the kids and gone. As Lester unspooled the story for him Suzanne wouldn't he tell him how she'd found this out, and he knew better than to ask Kettlewell grew more and more excited. By the time Lester was through, he was practically slobbering into the phone. Oh, oh, oh. This is going to be a fun phoner. He said. You ll do it. Then. Even after everything. Does Perry know you ve called me? Lester swallowed. No he said. I don't talk to Perry much these days. 
Kettlewell sighed. What the hell am I going to do with you two, I am sorry. Lester said. Don T be sorry. Be happy. Someone should be happy around here. Hervé Guignol chaired the executive committee. Sammy had known him for years. They de come east together from San Jose, where Guignol had run the entertainment side of eBay. They de been recruited by Disney Parks at the same time. During the hostile takeover and breakup, and they de had their share of nights out, golf games, and stupid movies together. But when Guignol was wearing his chairman's hat, it was like he was a different person. The boardroom was filled with huge, ergonomic chairs, the center of the table lined with bottles of imported water and trays of fanciful canopies in the shapes of Disney characters. Sammy sat to Guignol's left and Hackelberg sat to his right. Guignol brought the meeting to order and the rest of the committee stopped chatting and checking email and looked expectant. At the touch of a button, the door swung shut with an authoritative clunk and shutters slid down over the window. Welcome, and thank you for attending on such short notice. You know Augustus Hackelberg, he has something to present to you. Hackelberg climbed to his feet and looked out at them. He didn't look good. An issue has arisen Sammy loved the third-person passive voice that dominated corporate meetings. Like the issue had arisen all on its own. Spontaneously. A decision that was taken has come back to bite us. He explained about the Diobs and the code, laying it out more or less as it happened, though of course he downplayed his involvement in advising Sammy to go ahead and ship. The committee asked a few intense questions, none directed at Sammy, who kept quiet, though he instinctively wanted to defend his record. They took a break after an hour, and Sammy found himself in a corner with Guignol. What do you think? Sammy asked him. Guignol grimaced. I think we re pretty screwed. Someone is going to have to take a fall for this, you know. It is going to cost us a fortune. Sammy nodded. Well, unless we just settle with them. He said. You know we dropped the suit we just filed and they dropped theirs. He had hoped that this would come out on its own, but it was clear that Hackelberg wasnt going to offer it up himself. He was too in love with the idea of getting his hands on Perry and Lester. Guignol rocked his head from side to side. You think they de go for it. Sammy dropped his voice to a whisper and turned away from the rest of the room to confound any lip readers. I think they've a offered to do that. Guignol cut his eyes over to Hackelberg and Sammy nodded. Imperceptibly. Guignol moved away, leaving Sammy to eat a Mickey head built from chunks of salmon and hamachi. Guignol moved among the committee. Talking to a few members. Sammy recognized the behavior consolidating power. Hard to remember that this was the guy he de played savage. High stakes games of putt putt golf with. The meeting reconvened. No one looked at Sammy. They all looked at Hackelberg. What about trying to settle the suit? Guignol said. Hackelberg flushed. I don't know if that s possible, what about if we offer to settle in exchange for dropping the suit we've a just filed? Hackelberg's hand squeezed the side of the table. I don't think that that would be a wise course of action. This is the opportunity we've a been waiting for the chance to crack them wide open and see what s going on inside. Discover just what they've a taken from us and how. Out them for all their bad acts. Guignol nodded. Okay, that s true. Now, as I understand it. Every diob we shipped with this bank's person s code on it is a separate act of infringement. We shipped a million of them. What s the potential liability per unit, courts usually award. Guignol knocked quietly on the table. What s the potential liability what s the size of the bill a court could hand down, if a jury was involved? If, say, this became part of some 1s litigation portfolio. Hackelberg looked away. It s up to 500,000 per separate act of infringement. Guignol nodded. So, we re looking at a ceiling on the liability at 500 billion dollars. Then, technically, yes. But, I propose that we offer a settlement. Quid pro quo with this bank's person. We drop our suit if he indemnifies us from damages for his, seconded, said someone at the table. Things were picking up steam. Sammy bit the inside of his cheek to keep his smile in check. Wait, Hackelberg said. Gentlemen and lady. Please. While it is true that damages can technically run to $500 per infringement, that simply isnt done. Not to entities like this firm. Listen, we wrote that law so we could sue people who took from us. It won't be used against us. 
we will face, at worst, a few hundred dollars per act of infringement. Still a sizable sum of money, but in the final analysis, thank you. Guignol said. All in favor of offering a settlement. It was unanimous except for Hackelberg. Sammy got his rematch with Hackelberg when the quarterly financials came out. It was all that black ink, making him giddy. I don't want to be disrespectful. He said, knowing that in Hackelberg's books, there could be nothing more disrespectful than challenging him. But we need to confront some business realities here. Hackelberg's office was nothing like Sammy had expected not a southern gentleman's study lined with hunting trophies and framed ancestral photos. It was as spare as the office of a temp, almost empty save for a highly functional desk. Built-in bookcases lined with law books, and a straight-backed chair. It was ascetic. Severe, and it was more intimidating than any dark wood den could hope to be. Hackelberg's heavy eyelids drooped a little, the corners of his eyes going down with them. It was like staring down a gator. Sammy resisted the urge to look away. The numbers don t lie. Diab is making us a fortune, and most of it is coming from the platform, not the goop and not the increased visitor numbers. We remaking money because other people are figuring out ways to use our stuff. It is our fastest growing revenue source and if it continues, we re going to end up being a Diab company with a side business in theme parks. That s the good news. The bad news is that these characters in the ghost mall have us in their crosshairs. They re prying us open faster than we can lock ourselves down. But here s another way of looking at it. Every time they add another feature to the Diab, they make owning a Diab more attractive, which makes it easier for us to sell access to the platform to advertisers. Hackelberg held up his hands. Samuel. I think I've heard enough. Your job is to figure out new businesses for us to diversify into. My job is to contain our liability and protect our brand and investors. It sounds a lot to me like you re-saying that you want me to leave off doing my job so that you can do yours. Sammy squirmed. No that s not it at all. We both want to protect the business. I am not saying that you need to give these guys a free ride. What I am saying is, suing these guys is not good for our business. It costs us money, goodwill it distracts us from doing our jobs. Hackelberg leaned back and looked coolly into Sammy's eyes. What are you proposing as an alternative? Then. The idea had come to Sammy in the shower one morning, as he mentally calculated the size of his coming quarterly bonus. A great idea. Out of the box thinking. The right answer to the question that no one had thought to ask. It had seemed so perfect then. Now, though, I think we should buy them out. Hackelberg's thin, mirthless grin made his balls shrivel up. Sammy held up his hands. Here, look at this. I drew up some figures. What they re-earning. What we earn from them. Growth estimates over the next five quarters. It is not just some random idea I had in the shower. This makes sense. He passed over a sheaf of papers, replete with pie charts. Hackelberg set it down in the center of his desk, perfectly square to the corners. He flipped through the first five pages, then squared the stack up again. You've a done a lot of work here. Samuel. I can really see that. He got up from his straight-backed chair, lifted Sammy's papers between his thumb and forefinger, and crossed to the wall. There was a shredder there, its maw a wide rectangle, the kind of thing that you can stick entire hardcover books, or hard drives, into. Calmly, Hackelberg fed Sammy's paper into the shredder, fastidiously holding the paper clipped corner between thumb and forefinger, then dropping the corner in once the rest had been digested. I want to ask you for your computer. He said, settling back into his chair. But I expect that you will back up your other data and then send the hard drive to IT to be permanently erased. I don't want any record of this. Period. I want this done by the end of business today. Sammy's mouth hung open. He shut it. Then he opened it again. Abruptly. Hackelberg stood. Knocking his chair to the ground behind him. Not one word, do you understand me? Not one solitary word, you goddamned idiot. We re in the middle of being sued by these people. I know you know this, since it s your fault that it s happening. I know that you know that the stakes are the entire company. Now, say a jury were to discover that we were considering buying these assholes out. Say a jury were to decide that our litigation was a base stratagem to lower the asking price for their, their company the word dripped with sarcasm what do you suppose would happen? 
If you had the sense of a five-year-old, you'd have known better than to do this. Good Christ. Page. I should have security escort you to the gate. Turn on your heel and go weep in the corridor. Don T. Stand in my office for one more second. Get your computer to IT by 2 p.m. I will check. That goes for anyone you worked with on this, anyone who has a copy of this information. Now, leave. Sammy stood rooted in place. Leave, you ridiculous little dog s pizzle, get out of my sight. Sammy drew in a deep breath. He thought about saying something like, You can tea talk to me like that, but it was very likely that Hackleberg could talk to him just like that. He felt lightheaded and a little sick.